up, everybody? Welcome to the show. In this episode, Brent Porcio joins us to talk about what inspired Top Velocity, the most comprehensive biomechanical approach to enhancing pitching performance. We discuss Brent Porcio's life from the time he was born in New Orleans to the time he blew out his arm in his first game in college baseball, which led to somehow to him developing one of the most successful pitching programs that we know of today. Uh, so a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind throughout this episode, it starts off a little uh, abrupt in a way, we're, we're mid-conversation, and what we're discussing in that conversation is a lawsuit that Brent Porcio is currently uh, fighting. He was sued by Cleveland Indians pitcher Trevor Bauer for, quote, unauthorized use of his likeness and image through posts in his website, biomechanical breakdowns on YouTube, and multiple mentions in a program that pledges significant gains in pitching velocity. And this brings me to an episode of a podcast uh, with A-Rod. It's called The Corp. It's it's with A-Rod and Big Cat of, of Big uh, Barstool Sports. And in that podcast, they interviewed a entrepreneur um, whose name escapes me right now. But anyway, um, They discuss these kinds of issues, not necessarily Brent Porcio's issue head on. That's not that's not mentioned in any way, shape or form. But but it, it, you know, it connects in a way. Major League Baseball has a lot of problems right now. Not only is free agency an obvious problem, their players are opting to play other sports other than baseball. Baseball is currently the number three sport in the United States of America. Um, football ranks number one, NBA ranks number two, and baseball is right behind NBA with number three in terms of popularity and in terms of the kind of money that they generate. The NBA, I believe, just reported uh, a net worth of, of $16 billion, 15 or $16 billion, whereas the MLB is at 10. So <clears throat> another problem that Major League Baseball is facing is that they they – operate kind of like a communist country you know what i'm saying like they control the message it's a state-run media and if you use my content you use my stuff you need to pay me a tax and they're hurting themselves when they do this because people like me for example i know that that this this you know works perfectly into what i'm trying to do with this podcast and with the with the welcome to the show brand um it prevents us from using baseball content in, in, in the kind of work that we do. We don't provide sound in our podcast because we're not allowed to. We have to pay Major League Baseball to do that. Um, we're not allowed to use pictures from Getty or USA Today or from MLB.com because we have to pay a lot of money for that. For a single photo, go ahead and look up Getty Images. Go check out how much one photo is going to cost you. Imagine if you have a monthly subscription. Go check out USA Today. I know that they're not MLB. They're different entities. But now imagine how much MLB is going to charge you and, and the process that they go through to give you permission. If, if uh, you were to allow this content to be out there and be shared freely, imagine how much exposure your, your sport will get. And imagine how, how your players will be able to, to express themselves and, and be out there. And, and that's kind of, this leads to Brent Porcio because he, he's being sued because he uses players, you know, techniques. He shows them to, to his students and says, okay, this is what Trevor Bauer is doing right. This is what I want you to imitate, so on and so forth. You put it in slow-mo, you rewind, you fast forward, you go, you go back and forth, you study the images and he did this through YouTube and through all social media platforms and through his programs on uh, topvelocity.pro. And he got in trouble for it. And now he's, you know, this is a guy who started a business, you know, pretty much on his own. He knows what he's talking about because he has a lot of success. Go check out his website. And uh, he's getting screwed for it. Now, that's not to excuse him for what he's doing. You know, at the end of the day, he's still breaking the rules. At the end of the day, I'm not taking illegal, you know, videos and stuff and putting them up on my website. You know what I mean? Even though you go through Instagram today and you'll find thousands and hundreds of thousands of, of pages dedicated to showing highlights that, that people don't own the rights to, but nothing happens to them. So why do something to Brent Porcio? 
So I just wanted to give you that uh, tidbit of information before the interview begins, because as I said, it starts off mid conversation through there. And uh, Brent Porcio gave me permission to run that portion of the interview because he doesn't feel like he's done anything wrong. And in a lot of ways, I agree with him. And, um, you know, something's got to change with Major League Baseball. I love the game, and I'll continue to watch it. I'm a dork for it. Um, that's why I started this, because I love the sport. But I also ask, you know, I also present these kinds of things because I love the sport. You know what I mean? Um, so without further ado, check out Brent Porcio's website, topvelocity.pro. He's offering my listeners an exclusive discount of 10% off if you use the promo code WTTS at checkout. So go to Velo Pro. Uh, dot, I mean, Velo, sorry, topvelocity.pro. Check out any other program. See if something suits you or maybe a little one that you want to teach some, some pitching methods and put it in your cart and at checkout, enter the code WTTS and you're going to get 10% off any of those programs. Without further ado, Here's Brent Porcio. It's not something I really want to be in. I mean, I'm just a coach. I just want to coach. Yeah. I mean, it's not something I want to sit here and, you know, bitch about. It's just, it's not, I mean, I already put my statement out about it. I mean, I'm glad to talk about my position, but I just think it's, unfortunately, this isn't good for baseball and mm -hmm. I don't really want to not really interested in bringing a lot of attention to it because like I said, it's just a negative thing that I don't think need baseball needs to be dealing with because baseball has got enough challenges, you know? So, I mean, what, how do you see it? You know? Uh, so as a, I'm not, so I'm not in the same position as you are. You're, you're more of a trainer. You're an expert in terms of, uh, you know, the biomechanics behind everything and, and increasing pitchers velocities and all that stuff. My end of it is more trying to cover the sport, and I'm trying to do it through a perspective. I'm trying to provide our listeners and our, my readers um, different perspectives of the game of, of baseball. Um, I want to, yeah. I want, I want to, I want to provide the trainer's perspective, the agent's perspective, the players, the coaches. You know, even cool. even the guys who you don't see on TV, like yourself, and guys like uh, Doug Latta, who's Justin Turner's hitting coach. You know, I, I want to talk yeah. to those guys and get those That's guys cool. out there. Um, and so yeah, yeah, from what like I'm that. seeing is I mean, that you, you guys are typically pretty open about talking and, and giving your perspective. But when you, when you go to the big yeah. league level, these guys, they don't, they don't say shit. I mean, they don't want to talk. You know what I mean? Well, the problem is cause this is what happens. They, everybody starts getting sued. Right. Yeah. And that's the <laughs> thing know, too. The, right. That's the negative behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just, I think that's part of baseball's problem is that these guys, they need to have more of a personality. I don't know if they're not allowed, if they're being told not to be out there more. Um, yeah. But it I seems like everybody's just watching their back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're just all afraid of losing their jobs because they'll say the wrong thing, and it's just not a good. It's not a good environment. It's, it's crazy. It's really bad environment. yeah. It's really crazy considering that Roger Goodell gets a lot of gets a lot of flack for being harsh with his punishments and stuff. But his his players are comfortable to go out there and speak on social media and and talk to you know talk to people regular everyday people. But it seems like baseball players hide behind this curtain. And I, I, for me, I blame yeah. the higher ups personally. Um, yeah, me too. In terms of your case, yeah. from from what I see, to me it looks like you're not doing anything different than another guy is doing by using a, a professional athletes because that's what, what people are trying to attain right to be pro to go pro so they're gonna they're gonna look at pro video and break it down and it looks like that's what you were doing to me so um yeah that's i mean i'm doing it uh, obviously at a bigger like uh, i just have pushed more content out around it so i became a target yeah but yeah that's pretty much it and i've been told that different you know, levels of MLB that I don't have a right to use that tool. Mm -hmm. I don't have a permission to use that tool. So, yeah. And that's tough, man. That's Which, really I tough. Mean, at the end of the day, it, it well, at the end of the day, it doesn't hurt me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at the end of the day, they're, they're not saying, Brent, you can't do this to be successful. Because if you look at my content, it's a very small part of my content. 
I'm just doing that for the kids that want to understand and they can understand best through the idols they watch. That's kind of like their, their language. Right. So they're not, they're not really hurting me because, you know, I can sit here and talk about the medical terminology behind it. I can show myself doing it, but Mm -hmm. the problem is is they really learn it when they can understand how their idols are doing. So that this really attacks them by saying, Brent, you can't use that tool is really telling the kids, kids, you can't ask Brent to help you understand how your idols pitch. That's where, right. that's where I think it's upsetting. And just to, for clarification, I, when I've, I've seen it done on social media a lot, are you using it in, on your website and stuff like that? Well, I mean, I, yeah, I use it in all my content. Okay. That's how I teach. I teach several different ways. I teach through the medical terminology. I mm-hmm. teach through my my own implementation, my own drills, my, my own experience. Mm -hmm. And then I coach and then I teach through the elites. Like this is how the elites are doing. This is how they measure. So it it is, it's just been a tool that I've used to help teach, but now it's, you know, it's being taken away. So. Okay. And, and I see you have testimonials from big league players as well. So have they had an issue with like, you know, like guys like Cody Hall or, or David Aradzma, do, do they have, have they expressed any issue with what you're doing or are they totally cool with it? No, they totally support me. They yeah. think it's upsetting. They think, they think I, I have the right to do it, but at the end of the day, it also comes down to the laws, which right. is the law. So I have, does the law protect this, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so from what I've seen as well, cause I run a blog also and, and I have to go through creative commons stuff like like the regular joe taking pictures of of ball players to use photographs because it's it costs an arm and a leg to to just get a picture of a major league baseball <laughs> player you know what i'm saying uh-huh. so i can't imagine video and it's just as you said th- they're kind of hurting themselves because they're limiting uh where this stuff can be used you know what I mean? legally <laughs> yeah well G- gary there's a great podcast or i don't know a rod has a rod corp yeah, yeah, yeah. He, had, he did a podcast with Gary V and the guy with Barstool, and they they talked about this. And Gary V kept saying how this is going to kill Major League Baseball if they keep going around. Is the content police shutting mm-hmm. people down? Yeah, man. And the thing is that if you go on Instagram, there are some people that just take the content and they put it out there, and nothing happens to them. You know what I mean? Um, no, it's it's strictly on. They're just going after those that they want to go after exactly they're picking and choosing unfortunately i think it's bullying as well so yeah and it it sucks because i love baseball and i hate to hear these stories and and it break you know it it puts a sour taste in my mouth i still watch games but um you you hear people like eddie dominguez and and guys like nick Nick francona who were part of the game for such a long time and they're kind of sick and tired of it and they both use the same terminology they call the they call the mlb they have like a cartel mentality and you know they do yeah the more you delve into it you know the more it looks that way well i know and like i said i don't really want to go there i just want to coach unfortunately i've been you know i've been strong-armed by it so it's i have to deal with it It sucks but yeah right i'm I'm right there with you right and if we go on on uh on your website on top velocity dot is it dot pro now or is it dot net still it, I've got a bunch of them. Pretty much anything top velocity is mine, and I, I've been doing this for 13 years. So I have, I have so many different things that I give people that I have different sites that kind of categorize it. I mean, it, you know, I need to organize it better, but just say top, dot .net. Dot .net's fine. So. Okay, so top velocity dot .net. You do have <clears throat> a ton of testimonials. Excuse me. I'm battling a cough right now. Um, yeah, no problem. And to me, that, that, you know, that speaks – more volumes than a single lawsuit. It looks like you are helping players. Um, people do seek your help. So whatever you're doing is working. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, just, I mean, it's just unfortunate. You well, know? you should see my DMs. You should see my DMs. I can't get to them. I mean, mm-hmm. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people just asking for help. I mean, it's, I'm overwhelmed. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. <laughs> I mean, it's good to be busy, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's just, you know, in, in today's world, with the internet, you can be busy and be broke. Exactly. You know, that's the challenge is, is being able to, you know, 
I got a family, being able to feed your family so you can help people. And that's, that's the challenge, you know? Exactly. And, um, just so we bring this out and get it out of the way. Uh, and then do you, how much do you think, and you can no comment this, you don't want to talk about it. That's all good. Um, the whole driveline issue. Do you think that this, this whole thing, it's like Tre Trevor Bauer is connected to driveline. How much is, how much does it have to do with the fact that you guys are competing businesses? I'm assuming, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I, we're competing on the aspects of we're in the same industry, but right. I believe their product lines are very different now. So, I mean, I think we could do business together. They just, they've, I, you know, they've blocked me. I've attempted to reach out every time they email me. It's typically on do don't do this. Stop doing this. It's, it's never been, Hey, let's have a conversation. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it does feel like competition and you know, it's, I mean, it sucks. It's, it's, you know, they don't want to sit down and talk it out. And I think that's what the whole baseball community online that's followed us is like, yo guys need to sit down and talk this out. I'm like, dude, I'm open for it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to sit here and fight over this nothingness as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, I mean, it's obviously all connected. It's all gone off at the same time. And I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say it's strictly because competition. I mean, I'm not, I mean, that, we'll figure that out at the end, but it does feel that way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So aside from all the, all the drama, all drama aside, how is, how is, how is business going? Are you still getting customers? Are you still seeing a lot of success stories? Tell me a little bit about top velocity. Yeah. I mean, top, top velocity has always been me. So I'm going to, no matter what happens, I'm still going to keep doing what I do. I'm still, mm -hmm. still going to help. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just in customer service. So if the kids need my help, I'm going to provide my help. And yes, they keep continually asking for help okay. and I'll continue to help them. I think as far as the business, it's obviously being challenged, trying to weather these storms. So the business aspect is a little chaotic and things have shifted and trans moved around. But, but at the end of the day, I still, I'm constantly being pulled 50 different ways to help as many people as I possibly can. Yes. Right. It's, it's insane. <laughs> That's cool. So yeah. what, in, what inspired top velocity? What made you want to want to create this business? Yeah, it comes from my career. And I think that's the hardest part about it is I'm, I'm a bit of a victim of what I'm trying to help. I mean, I was a victim. So when I was, 18 years old, I tore my rotator cuff, my first college appearance, and doctors, basically after the surgery, this was in 1995, they said, look, we don't see you playing again. You, you're, you know, I was very physically immature. I was a late bloomer. They're like, we don't see you being able to come back from this with the, the eligibility you have left. You should try something else. And, you know, I love, I love the sport. I, I mean, I love baseball. I love sports. My grandfather was a famous football coach. He actually formed the AFL with Lamar Hunt and coached in it for years and around the greats. And he played profession professionally and he played uh, for Vanderbilt back in when there was like six teams. So I always was, felt like I was going to follow in his legacy. And, you know, and so I always wanted to stay in the game. I just had this desire for the game. And at that point, when doctor said I pick shit, pick something else, I, I just couldn't walk away from baseball. I was 18 years old. I, and it really hit me. I went into a little depression just because I was too young trying to still identify who I was in my life. Right. But I made a decision and there actually was a cool moment where, you know, I had doctors and professionals tell me I'm done. And I was just, I was reading a lot of spiritual stuff and trying to search through my own soul. And there's that old saying that says where there's a will, there's a way. And I was right. like, well, if this is true, then I've got the will. So that means a way will present itself. So I said, I'm just going to stick it out. So it really started the new chapter of baseball for me. It was okay. This conventional wisdom, I followed it. I obeyed it. Nothing. I, I'm ruined. I'm going to reach out of the box and I'm going to try to figure out how this really works. And then it just a cascade of, you know, great coaches coming in and just allowing me to see it in a different perspective, typically coaches out of baseball. Mm -hmm. And I started to, um, 
really understand how this works. I, I got into an Olympic strength and conditioning approach, which I believe is the best way to develop an elite, explosive, highly mobile athlete. And I mastered that or came close to mastering. I don't think we ever mastered it. And then I um, started getting into biomechanics. And I think at the time, the only one really talking about like elite biomechanics of baseball was Tom House. Hmm. And Tom House at the time was talking about hip to shoulder separation. And that really struck a chord with me because when I started looking at my delivery, I was like, you know, I don't do this. I don't separate hips and shoulders. And more than likely, it's probably why I got injured because you could see studies would show it had high correlations to injury. Obviously, it would, it would have improved performance. So I was like, I need to start understanding and mastering this. And that was really the beginning of, hey, how much can I really learn about real biomechanics? And I put my head into medical journals and my head are still in medical journals. And I started to lay out a foundation and it became the biomechanical system that I use today. And when I applied that with the elite Olympic training that was you know, put like 60 pounds of my body in three years and hmm. made me an explosive elite athlete. I'm playing in some men's league in California. And I went from the year before of like being a decent pitcher to literally striking everyone out. I could throw the ball past them. And obviously it's something that changed. So they encouraged and, me to go to a tryout. And this and is after, this is after doctors had told you that you weren't going to be able to pitch anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So in, in the crazy thing is you're so brainwashed by baseball that when it, that started happening, I was just going, wow, I guess they're wrong. Or, you know, maybe this is just, you know, God bless me with my, the chance to do this again. I didn't really even allow what I was learning to go and change my perspective of why their injury occurred in the first place or, or what I believed was what built elite pitchers. I hadn't let it change that. It was just new information. And I really didn't understand it until I go out and I try out for, I go to a scouting bureau tryout and I'm throwing 94 miles an hour and I had no idea. And I, you know, I got a lot of interest from affiliated teams, but I was 26 at the time. Mm -hmm. This is years later. And they were like, look, go play some mini ball and maybe that'd be a great opportunity for you to kind of prove yourself at, at our level and get in. So I went down and played in San Diego for the San Diego surf dogs. It was golden league. We had Jose Canseco on our team. We had a blast and I, you know, I pitched and, you know, I, at that point I had to learn how to develop pitches and, and there's all the other stuff to being a good pitcher at that level. And I had to get used to the speeds of the game. I mean, I hadn't really been at that level. And I also played in Europe as well, but I got to a point where I, I just, you know, I was 28 when I was really starting to put it all together. And I was like, all right, it's, it's a little late in the game. I think this is time to take what I've developed, what I've learned, and apply it as a coach. Because once again, I was always, you know, looked up to my grandfather. He was a great coach. I said, this is probably my chance to do this. So I pushed, I put it out, and I put this method out of biomechanics that I developed. I used this Olympic approach. So I'm literally going into this industry with the most unconventional stuff you could ever push in an industry, and the hate that went off was insane. <sighs> I had a guy threaten to kill me for putting the information out. He said he's going to come, he was going to devote his life to taking me down because of this information. Jesus, how come? <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> it, he just said it was going to ruin the game. Oh, my God. You know, you just have those hardcore guys that really believe that the tradition, the pastimes, like that this is a direct, direct threat to it because it's new. It's everything really the, the opposite of what they've said. So it became very threatening, extremely threatening. But I just stayed the course. I believed in it because I actually, I mean, if I hadn't done it personally, I think I'd, I never would have spent the time pushing it online because of the hate that was coming from it. Mm. But I, because I believed in it and it worked and I was helping kids do the same, I just, I kept going and it kept working and it kept growing. And then all of a sudden I started getting attention from big league teams and then I had you know, two big league teams hire me to be a biomechanics analyst. And, you know, just the other day I sat down with the Yankees and they wanted to talk about how this has been so influential in their organization and they wanted to better understand it. And I literally talked to their, every one in their front office that's linked with pitching. Okay. And, you know, I've 
I've been in the same situations with many other teams. And so it just took off. And, it, and, and as much as in the beginning it was hate, then that hate started to slow down. And then it became more like, hey, maybe this is the way. Yeah. And I think it's cresting now at this place where people are going, wow, I think this is another way to do this. Mm-hmm. And they're starting to accept it. Yeah, I agree. Um, are you familiar with Mike Marshall, the Mike Marshall pitching motion? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, I studied his as well. Yeah, so how similar – I mean, it's odd. It's odd-looking, but it's – I mean, clearly it works. Um, and I, I believe that he was one of these guys that got caught a lot of this flack too because he was doing something different. Um, how much of your – you know, your style, you know, how much has he influenced your, I know that it's a very small minuscule. I'm sure you study a lot of other things, but it's someone that I'm the most familiar with. Um, how much yeah. has, has his pitching motion influenced you? You know, I would say, here's the thing. I read his understanding of Tommy John and, and UCL damage. And mm-hmm. I think he, he knows it better than anyone. <laughs> so, uh, and at the end of the day, he has a reason to, you know, he tore his UCL before the surgery was, you know, developed. So right. it ended his career, unfortunately. So I think he turned that into kind of like me really understanding what went on. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I no doubt would never argue his understanding of why the UCL is so vulnerable to injury. Okay. So I think he's the master at that. That's awesome. Um, I don't, I don't agree, or I wouldn't say I agree. I don't – I'm not a, a big believer of his implementation process. Mm-hmm. I think there is some interesting things that he's developed. But because I see it differently than him, mm-hmm. I took a different road of developing drills and tools to implement You know what I believe biomechanically. So I, I, I'm more of a – I think if the guy who's influenced me the most, the more I read medical journals is Ben Kibler. He's a research scientist who's done a ton of kinetic chain uh, education and studies. And I mean, his work is just unbelievable. And it just shows how, you know, the lower half, the core, how pivotal it is into removing stress from the arm from increasing velocities. Like to me, the favorite, my favorite science by Kibler and Chandler is, um, well, actually, I mean, Kibler's, you know, it's another guy was Chandler too, but Kibler's the, the one who drives most of, most of it. It basically said that if you decrease kinetic energy, that basically energy coming up the body through the hip and in, in, in trunk, if you decrease that by 20%, that requires a 34% increase and the rotational velocity of the shoulder just to put the same amount of force to the hand. Wow. When, I, when I read that study, when I read that, um, you know, which came from one of their studies, it, sh- it solidified everything I knew I believed in because I personally experienced it. And it just proved to me that there's only one way to do this, and it's mm-hmm. ground up. Okay. Because the energy coming up is almost worth twice the energy you can create in your arm. So... I think I wouldn't say that that I think Marshall and I could sit down. I've never talked to him and have a really intellectual, great conversation about that. Mm -hmm. I just have, I I think I've bought into that way more than the Marshall Marshall approach. And I, and I've built my whole approach off of that uh, foundation. So, okay. So you, you read this study about the decrease, uh, the quote that you just mentioned, um, yeah. how do you then implement that? Like, how do you take it from the page and put it into action? Well, once again, I did it personally. So I, it's crazy as I had an actual experience before I had an understanding, Right. which that happens a lot. And unfortunately, a lot of people, when they have that, they don't go and search for the understanding. They just try to tell people what they did and they don't really understand why it worked or if that was the actual thing that worked and how that would apply to every different body besides yours. Mm -hmm. So once when I did it, when I experienced the power development through the kinetic chain of the Olympic lifts, and when that went through the roof and when I could jump 34 inches at 235 pounds, when I could run, you know, a 
one five ten yard sprint and you know when i was moving elite and then i'd get on the mound and i could throw again and my arm didn't hurt and i could throw even harder than i threw before and when i started understanding things like hip to shoulder separation how that allows that energy to transfer even better to the end of to the end of the chain that ex once i gained the knowledge and then remembering that experience it just solidified the whole thing and then now i can go back to that training pr approach i can go back to we need to be highly athletic explosive efficient kinetic chains which is what the olympic approach does and then we need tools drills that teach the thrower how to implement more of the leg energy the leg power that we're developing in those olympic lifts and through something like hip to shoulder separation that slows down or gives us more time to do that because it delays when the arm goes. Okay. And so that's, that's the implementation key. So when people come to me and they go, you know, a coach says I need to use the lower half, but they never show me how that's what I've mastered. I can show them with tools and drills, and education of how to use the lower half. And that is the foundation based on that Kibler study is the quintessential foundation to a healthy elite pitcher. That's awesome. And so I'm sure that a lot of your customers are also kids who probably are in little league and, and are trying to, you know, develop as players. Um, mm -hmm. how, how does, how does this program or how does any of your pro, which one of your programs let's start with and yeah, which one of your programs would best suit a child in little league in little leagues that wants to, you know, that wants help with their pitching. I guide them. I mean, I do have a beginner's program, but I, I guide them as much to a, a, a product I affiliate with is the King of the Hill, mm -hmm. which is owned by Rich Duno. And he really bought in with me during the same time to this method. And he wanted to give a training device that would help anyone, specifically the beginner, understand how the legs interact with the ground. So he created, created this little pitching, uh, or it's, it's basically a little force plate off the rubber that when you push on it in a specific direction, mm -hmm. a more linear direction, it gives you feedback. It gives you a bang. Mm -hmm. And you can crank how hard it is to push. You can force your, your body to generate more force. Mm -hmm. So that's a great tool for a youth kid because most kids don't have the core and leg strength to, to move well. So, and, and typically when they go into pitching, Coaches just want strikes, so they're just being taught the arm path. They're not mm -hmm. being taught the legs and core, which is, the, we know, the foundation of the healthy high-velocity pitcher. might not be demand of them when they're young, but it should be the foundation they're building so when they're older, they have that foundation and, and they're healthy. Um, so giving them that tool to sit there and go, hey, wow, this is what it feels like to actually push off the ground and move your body into a throw, I think is a vital critical element to developing a healthy young pitcher or throwing athlete. Hmm. And that's, so I, I typically push them into that device and I have a training program for it, a little training manual for it. Or the Velo pros with Jim Parquet, who's a big leaguer, retired big leaguer who developed a simple resistance system that holds the hip and um, back leg down. So yeah. you don't transfer energy early. We interviewed um, that, uh, Sean Taunt from that company, Velo Pro. Yeah, I think Sean's great. Yeah. yeah, Sean's great. Yeah, Velo Pro. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, th and, there's and really... I developed. I, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just saying I developed a manual for that as well, and mm -hmm. those are just great tools for teaching young kids how to understand and develop a lower half, and, and which is the foundation of how the upper half works. Right. So. This is really cool, man. Um, th uh, this is great. I would. I don't want to keep you for too long because you know usually I try to keep the interv interviews around a half hour. Um, yeah. But I'd love to have you back on if you're you know if you're willing. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, once again, my purpose here is to share this knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, I said real quick. I sat down with Glenn Fleissig with ASMI, or yeah. we were. I went to the baseball injuries course, and he looked at me and he said, "Man." This is we, we need you to do this. We need you to put this information out and get it out. We're, we're collecting it. We need someone like you to get this information out. So at the end of the day, I'm just the messenger. 
but also understand why they don't want to put the information out because you have to take all the bullets and mm-hmm. the arrows. <laughs> so, right. Right. Like I said, at the end of the day, I want to keep doing this, man. I just want to help them get this information out because it needs to get out. Yeah, man, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And and just you know, I always record an intro, so I don't want you to think that I'm I'm gonna ignore <laughs> your name and all that stuff. But I just want to let everyone know out there that we're talking to uh, Brent Porcio of Top Velocity, topvelocity.net. Um, and yeah, I would definitely check him out. Check out his social media accounts at Top Velocity on Instagram, and I believe it's the same handle on Twitter. Um, do you have a Facebook handle by any chance? Everything's pretty much top velocity. So if okay. you search, search top velocity on, on all platforms, you'll find me. And I really appreciate this, Manny. It's been exciting. I enjoyed doing it. Dude, uh, it's been awesome. And I, I always like to end by giving you an opportunity to, you know, send a message out there to, we have a lot of, a lot of kids tend to listen to this. Um, and I like to give them advice. I want them, a lot of kids get their heads down. I know as a kid, I wasn't, a, I wasn't, I wasn't motivated as a child, like, I was totally content just staying home or playing stickball in the corner. I grew up in New York City, um, but I could have used a, a little pick me up as a kid. I think you know, God only knows what could have happened. And uh, I always like to send a message out to those, to, you know, to kids like that out there. So, do you have anything you'd like to say to a kid who really wants to play baseball but just doesn't feel the motivation to go out there and do it or doesn't feel like he's good enough? Um, do you have anything you you any advice you would give them? Definitely. You can do anything. You just have to not create the end of your story. Don't say it has to happen this way. Just find what you love and what you're passionate about and just believe that if you put your heart and soul and mind into it and you work hard, you learn as much as you can, you will be who you want it to be. You will live your dream. You'll do it. It might not be the way you wanted it to happen but you still will have that experience in the end of your career. So just don't allow anything to limit you or suppress you. Just believe that if you just put your passion into it, that you will be what you want to be. You'll live the dream. That's great, man. That's really good advice. Don't create the end of your story. I like that. Brent, thank you so much for coming on, and we hope to talk to you again sometime soon, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, man. All right. All right, so I wanted to clarify a couple of things that I had said at the beginning of the episode. So, yes, the popularity of the NBA is is above MLB right now. But no, uh, the revenues in the NBA are not as high as Major League Baseball, although it's increasing at a faster rate. So uh, as of 2018, the latest data that I could find, uh, football, NFL is worth $14 million. And the NBA is at about seven or eight, something like that. Um, so they're not far behind. Do you know what I mean? And in terms of smaller arenas, uh, smaller teams, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's still not a good look for Major League Baseball. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, all that matters is the fan. And the fan right now prefers basketball over baseball. So. That's all I have to say. All right, guys, that was Brent Porcio of topvelocity.pro. Remember to use the promo code WTTS to get 10% off any of the products or services that are on topvelo.pro. That's topvelocity.pro. Use the promo code WTTS. Thanks once again to Brent Porcio. Thanks for listening. Peace.